Hello, everyone. Welcome to this debate on science to the rescue. I am your host, Anil Anantaswamy. We have a wonderful panel today for this debate. But before I introduce them, let me tell you a little bit about the debate itself. In response to the pandemic, governments are keen to say that we should listen to the science. But this supposes there is an agreed body of scientific knowledge. In fact, there are deep differences between the scientists involved. Those advising Sweden clearly had a different theory than those advising the UK or Italy. Scientists outside of epidemiology have been critical of the epidemiologists. Science is a melee of competing and often incompatible views. So how should we respond? Should we stop hiding behind the quote unquote science and recognize we have to decide? Can we seek to weigh and judge different scientific opinions if we are not ourselves experts? Or should governments simply choose the scientific theories with the most support? Or is this a route to irrational and dangerous decision making? Our panel for this debate, Carlo Rovelli is an Italian theoretical physicist who works mainly in the field of quantum gravity. Carlo currently works in the Centre de Physique Théorique de Lumini of Aix Marseille University and has written many popular science books that have sold in their millions across over 40 languages. In 2019, he was named one of the 100 most influential thinkers in 2019 by Foreign Policy magazine. Heather Douglas is an associate professor of philosophy at Michigan State University. Her research focuses on the, on the role of social and ethical values of science. Uh, in science, the nature of science is responsibility in and for science and the interface between science and policy. In 2016, she was elected as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Patricia Churchland is the UC President's Professor of Philosophy Emerita at the University of California, San Diego. Patricia is a philosopher noted for her contributions to the philosophy of mind and her work on the integration of philosophy and science. She has pioneered the now extremely fruitful branch of philosophy of mind known as neurophilosophy. So welcome, Carlo, Heather, Patricia. Um, I will start off this debate uh, with a question that each of you will have three minutes to respond to. And the question is, is science a progressing body of knowledge? So, Carlo, can we start with you? <clears throat> um, thank you, um, Anil. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for um, this question. Um, but I would like to start from what you said, introducing the debate, um, to which I um, would disagree. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that might uh, perhaps uh, start uh, the actual debate. I think that one should not confuse uh, uh, science with its limitation, its confusion, its different opinions, uh, its uh, um, incomplete knowledge aspect from politics and from the political decisions. The decisions we have to take in the pandemics are not scientific decisions, they're political decisions. They have to be taken uh, um, negotiating different values, different interests, a different push in the society. Uh, it's a difficult question whether we prefer having more old people dying or uh, people going into poverty and have uh, less resources. It's, it's, it's a question that doesn't have a straight scientific answer, obviously, whatsoever. Um, different countries have chosen different paths, uh, perhaps listening to slightly different scientific positions, but not because science has moved them in one direction or the other. Because there are uh, different, because we are humans and we choose differently in, in, in different contexts. So uh, it's wonderful for a scientist like me to see society uh, asking science so much as it has happened in the current uh, pandemic. But it's very worried when uh, politicians try to hide behind science and say, oh, science tells us to do that. Science never tells us to do this or that. It tells us that as best as we know, with our disagreement, at the current level of understanding, um, the most reliable prediction on the is, is, is that if we do that, this will happen. If we do that, this will happen. If we stay home, uh, perhaps less people will die, uh, given our medical system, given this, given, uh, given that. Um, so finally, to get to actual your, your question, Science is not a body of knowledge. It's a uh, 
process, a, a practice in which we try to increase our knowledge. Part of it is, a large part of it, it's very, there's a lot of um, agreement and consensus. Uh, part we definitely don't know. We're in the, in the dark. We have no idea. So we try in all possible direction. And then there is the boundary in between in which there is discussion. We try to get a consensus. Historically, what is wonderful is that uh, the scientific uh, uh, way of trying to bring knowledge has very often led to consensus. Not always, but mostly led to consensus and to reliable knowledge. Uh, so this is the strength of science. Ignoring it is completely stupid, but the decisions are not scientific or political. Thank you, Carlo. Um, that was a wonderful opening, and I think it sets us up for the rest of the debate. So Heather, would, uh, would you like to take a stab at that question? Yeah, so actually I have a different question to take a stab at, which is the one I was given. Um, is there such a thing as the science? And I think if we mean a set of fixed and permanently certain facts, no, there is no such thing as the science. Science, as Carlo said, is an ongoing critical discussion, and it's based on reasons and empirical evidence. And I think, and Carlo agrees, it is the best source for reliable knowledge about the world, but it doesn't produce truth with a capital T, timeless, permanent, authoritative truth. Um, we don't have access to such truth through science. So what we have instead is a group of people in continual debate, discussion over what to think about the world, people continually gathering new evidence, developing new ideas and theories, and testing those theories against evidence. This produces a set of everyday and always contestable knowledge claims. Um, I think that is what science is. I suspect the fact that science produces such changeable claims is frustrating to non-scientists. Why can't the experts just decide what is the case? Why can't we just have the science? It'd be so much more convenient. Um, but the fact that there is no such thing as the science, that our knowledge is always open to being challenged by reasoned argument and new evidence, even consensus, um, is precisely why it is the best source for reliable knowledge about the world. If it were not, if it were mere, um, it would be just mere dogma and not nearly as trustworthy. So we may not have the science as a sort of fixed fact, but we have science as, pra as a practice, and it is very much worth our attention. Now, because ongoing debate is such a central aspect of science on many scientific issues, there will be experts who disagree about what the best understanding of evidence is, or in some cases, even about what constitutes the best evidence. And we see that with the current pandemic. This can make it hard on the non-scientist, which expert should be believed, particularly when a decision has to be made now, before debate among experts can fully play out, which can often take decades. So we almost never have the luxury to wait until all the science is settled before acting. We have to use the available evidence and expertise to make a timely decision, to see what our options are, what is at stake, what is most important to protect, and what we are willing to risk. When facing such complexity, I think it is a good idea to rely upon experts, those who have the requisite knowledge and who are engaged in scientific community debates because that's how they maintain their expertise but also experts who roughly share your values. For such experts would make judgments as you would if you had their expertise. The problem arises when one conflates such experts with people who are merely saying what you want to hear. Telling those two groups apart, I think is crucial to relying upon science responsibly. And doing so, I think is the central challenge of, of the 21st century. Hmm. Thank you, Heather. Um, Patricia? Uh, your words? Yeah, well, both of those uh, openings were, were very rich and, and full of ideas and information. I maybe will try to come at the question in a, in a slightly different way. I mean, one point uh, about the difference between policy making and science vis-a-vis -vis the coronavirus, that's absolutely correct. We want to make sure that that distinction is there and robust. But the other thing I think that is really important with regard to the policy making um, in, in the last uh, few months is that there has been so much uncertainty within science about what the heck this virus is, how it works, why there is such variability in symptoms, uh, what it might take to get a vaccine. 
And I mean, one of the glorious things about the science in, regarding the coronavirus was how quickly we got the genome. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.